And now, even today, we are calling Christians. Now today, people are just taking on the name Christian, but they are not looking like the teacher, which means they're not a disciple. So a disciple is going to eventually, they're going to study, they're going to learn from the teacher. Their job is to listen to the teacher's teachings. Their job is to study it. Their job is to completely commit themselves to these, to his doctrine, to his ways, to his laws, to his um, whatever in our job at Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. We thank you so much for taking another time to uh, join us here at Fuel Station Church. If you did not have a chance to like and subscribe to our channel, we do ask you to do so. We are so excited because today we are going to be going into a new teaching series. We just came out of a teaching series entitled Christ and Singleness and Marriages. And, and I believe that will be a blessing, a blessing to you. If you have not had a chance to watch it, we do actually to go to our, on our page and begin to watch those videos. I know it's going to speak directly to you. So, uh, today we're going to start a brand new series here. We're in 2024. I can't believe how fast time went. Uh, but hey, we are already here in 2024. So I know God is going to do something with us. The last, uh, uh, the first couple of messages we've had um, going into the year was a word God has given each of us about um, understanding that uh, that we got to get prepared and make sure we got our ticket. And we were talking about the airport culture and everything like that. And I pray that you guys were blessed with those analogies. But now uh, we're going to start with today with episode one of the new series, which is going to be entitled Disciples or Christians. Disciples or Christians. Now, I know that you know, you probably saying, well, and I'm both. Well, I'm, I want to uh, kind of break this up again. We're going to be drilling down on the difference between a disciple versus a Christian. OK, because there's a lot of people today that call themselves Christians, but Christians are not always disciples. I pray that you understand that. OK, a lot of people are saying they're Christians, but every Christian is not a disciple. So my job today in this series is to give you an introduction of the two so we can understand. And my prayer for everybody here at Fuel City Church and everybody here at um, Virtual Church and, and those of you who are watching, my job is to make sure that we become disciples. OK, and I'm explain why I'm big on disciples, because, again, we're in this society today. Um, that everyone say I'm a Christian. And, um, I love how my wife, she would say all the time. She said, when, you know, when I came to America, it seemed like everybody here is Christian. <laughs> and, it, and I know what she's saying. Um, because it is true. Um, I remember calling myself Christian for years when I wasn't even in church. It was just something, it was the thing I connected to. So we're going to go deep into this. So I'm going to ask you to get your Bible. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 14 today. So let's go into this. Um, and, you know, and you can put in the chats, are you, you know, I'm a disciple or I'm a Christian. All right. But I, I pray that you put I'm a disciple after you get the teaching today. You're going to really want to make sure you're a disciple. OK. All right. So let's go to Luke chapter 14. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you because there are some key things that we got to understand about discipleship. Um, I don't know why for the last couple of months, God had been putting in my heart about discipling disciples, disciples, disciples. And, I, and I've been hearing it so much. Even when we started Fuel Station Church, that has been the thing. Um, a lot of churches, they're not um, discipling people. A lot of churches have members, they have people who visit, but there's there's not a discipleship. And this is really what we have to get back to. And I know when God said that for uh, uh, called me and my wife to, to begin Fuel Station Church, he wanted this to be a discipleship ministry because there's um, a lot of people who, again, they're going to church, but they're not disciples. And I'm explain that. All right. But let's read Luke chapter 14 and we're going to read verse 25 to verse 33. So if you have your Bibles and those of you who are watching this, please, you can read the scriptures on the, on the screen. All right. So it says this verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him and he turned and said unto them, verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, Yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Verse 27, 
And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first and counteth the cause, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Verse 29, less happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. Verse 30, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Verse 31, or what king goeth to make it war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Verse 32, or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador, uh, I'm sorry, an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Verse 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he have, he cannot be my disciple. So I hope everybody's seen that. Jesus pretty much says he gives us kind of a profile of what a disciple is. All right. So now this is going to be good. And I need to give you just a little um, history about this because a lot of people don't even understand um, this word or what this word means. Disciple means learner. OK, it means student learner. OK, the disciples job is to take the teacher's uh, the teacher's vision, the teacher's mission and to expand it, the teacher's message and to expand it. OK, so when you are a disciple of someone, your job is to take the message, take what you're learning and then spreading that. That is a disciple, a student, a learner. OK, so. The thing that a lot of people don't realize is that, um, you know, it, you know, and, and this is just to kind of help you guys understand that, uh, you know, if, in the scriptures in Luke, um, you're going to see that. And most of you know that Jesus began his ministry at age 30. And a lot of people don't know why he began his ministry at age 30. Uh, but my job is to kind of give you a little history about this whole thing. So some people say, well, why did Jesus begin? Why did he start at 30? Why did he start any time earlier than that? Well, in the ancient Jewish laws, you could not be a rabbi and start a public, um, a, a public work or a public school or begin to teach students as a rabbi until you were 30. OK, so that's that's key. So remember, Jesus was uh, he was born in that in that culture. So the reason why he did not start his teaching ministry, bef I mean, his, his ministry before that is because it was not the culture. You cannot do that in the Jewish law. So I hope this is making sense to you. So even John the Baptist, John had disciples, but John started his ministry at 30. So when people see John going out and and and, and baptize and people think that was taking place when he was in his early 20s, John. John turned 30. Remember, he was six months older than Jesus. John started at 30 because at 30 is where you can have followers. I pray you guys get that. OK, so this should actually help explain a lot of the things of why did Jesus wait till 30 before he began his public ministry is because in that culture, you could not do public ministry as a rabbi until you were 30. Just like here in, in the United States, I believe in our state, you can't drive till you are 16. That is just the culture, the time that we're living. And so if I wanted to use a car or started to um, um, uh, teach people how to drive or whatever, I can't do that until I'm 16 because I can't drive till I'm 16. It doesn't mean that I don't have the giftings or all these things on inside me, but culturally, I would be illegal to do it be any time earlier than 16. So when you think 30, Jesus becoming 30, that was huge because of the culture he's in, living in. So I pray that part makes a lot of sense to you because a lot of people think, well, if he was, you know, if he was in the, you know, uh, divine, why did he have to wait to 30? Well, it's because of the culture he was in. I pray that makes sense. Now, why is that important? Because now he's 30, he gets baptized now he goes to the wilderness, Luke chapter four. And then after he comes out of the wilderness, he begins his public ministry. And then from there, he began to call disciples because he's now legal to do it in that culture. So when he began to call disciples, he began to call people. Now, listen to this. He began to call people who was not already in the it, it, that they, he wasn't calling scribes and people who was already in. in I'm just in paraphrasing. He wasn't calling people who was in Bible school. 
<laughs> you know, because I know many of you, you think, well, I got to get I got to go to Bible school first before Jesus calls me. Just sometimes Jesus will call you and you don't have any training from the from the law. and None of that stuff. God is like, listen, I'll make you fisher of men. I'll make you because I want you to be my disciple. So he called Peter, Andrew, John. He calls James. He calls all these people, Matthew from a tax collector from different backgrounds. And they became his students. I pray this is I pray you guys are following this. They became his students. So now they are called disciples. Why? Because they're following a master teacher. His name is Jesus. So that's why you will see the scripture. It would say the disciples of John, because John was the teacher of those disciples and then the disciples of Jesus. And then when John got beheaded, a lot of the disciples from John's uh, from from I call it John's school, they began to go follow Jesus. It was like, hey, a shifting of the guard. So what happened here is now Jesus gets these guys and they're unlearned, just like me and you. Me and you are unlearned. God calls some of y'all right off the right out the streets. <laughs> and he was like, come follow me. And you like, I don't know. I, I, I can't. You can't use me, God. I don't got that. Yeah, I want you come follow me. And you start following God and then watch this. You give your life to Jesus. Now, this is where it comes to our thing. You give your life to Jesus. And now all of a sudden you say, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you are the son of God. You, you make the public confession. Now watch this. Yay. You are now a believer or we call a Christian. Yay. You get happy. But the problem is, remember, we were talking in the last week's teaching about many people go, they go and they get their ticket, right? But now it's time to go through security. And watch this. Only disciples go through security. <laughs> I pray you guys get this. <laughs> Only disciples, because if we if you go back to Luke chapter 14, he says, if you're not willing to give up, if you're not willing to hate mother, father, what he's trying to say by hate, he don't mean hate like you discuss them. If you're not willing to take them out your carry on bag for my sake, <laughs> you can't be my disciple. Because you're going to have to give up some things to be my disciple. And this is what separates disciples from Christians. I pray that you guys are understanding this because every believer, every Christian ain't willing to go through security checkpoint. I'm clear about that. So you have a lot of people. Yes, I'm saved. Yes, I go to church. Yes, I'm a Christian. Guys, understand this. Christianity is a religion today. When you go and apply for something, they're going to ask you, what is your religion? And guess what? Next to Christianity, you go see a plethora of other religions. So Christianity was a it's a name of a religion that that should be connected to Christ, uh, the, the calling of Christ. But let me show you where we get this from. So please go to your Bibles and we're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 11. Let me show you this because a lot of people don't understand. And, you know, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you got to understand where this came from. So let's go to Acts, chapter 11 and we're going to go to verse uh, 26. All right. So let me show you this real quick. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And it reads this. And when he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Now watch this. And taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So isn't that weird how it says the disciples were called Christians? I hope y'all saw that. It didn't say the Christians were called disciples. It says the disciples were called Christians, meaning the disciples started looking so much like the, their teacher. <laughs> they started looking so much like him that the people in Antioch started calling them Christians. Isn't that something? Hmm. So Chris, the word Christian came right from here this is the this is where you go see it birth and now even today we are calling christians now today people are just taking on the name christian but they are not looking like the teacher which means they're not a disciple so a disciple is going to eventually they're going to study they're going to learn from the teacher their job is to listen to the teacher's teachings their job is to study it their job is to completely commit themselves to these to his doctrine to his ways to his laws to his 
um, whatever. And our job as disciples is to obey the master teacher. And so Jesus is, is making disciples. So when he tells the disciples, he first grabbed in um, the first, you know, the 12. And there were many other disciples. And we're going to be going over that in, in the many of the teachings. But I just want you to understand what a disciple is. Notice he didn't again. He didn't call he didn't call people who knew the scriptures. He didn't really call people who was educated spiritually. He called unlearned, uneducated people and says, I will make you. And he's doing that with us today. Now, a true disciple will say, well, since you're going to make me, um, I don't know what you're making me into, but my job is to learn your culture, learn your ways. This is going to bring us to our Sanctified in the Kingdom series. And I, as we went over a, a wonderful series about that. But the whole job of the student is to learn what the master is teaching. So this is why every Jesus disciples, our mission is to understand and obey his words, to learn his culture, to learn his ways, to learn his mind, to understand what he's looking at, to understand. I mean, to spend time, watch this, to spend time alone so we can know his thoughts, know the intent of his heart. This is why we got to get into the word of God, because this actually shows us what the teacher really wanted to tell the students. I pray this is helping. <laughs> now, again, a lot of churches don't even talk much about what Jesus said because they are Christians. Christians, you could go to church and hear music all day and don't hear no scriptures and be like, oh, we had a good time. We jumped, we leaped, we shouted, we danced. Oh, we had a good time. Oh my God, this was so good. Oh, I felt it. I felt that Christians can do that and then leave there and go right back into the sin that we just was, uh, that we were just doing and have no, and watch this, have no conviction <laughs> and then come back next week and say, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I pay my tithes, I give, I volunteer. So I'm a Christian. Disciples follow Jesus' teachings and they're obedient to his, his teachings, his words. So a disciple is going to do what Luke is commanding us to do. Jesus is very clear. Jesus says, listen, if you're not willing to give up certain things to follow me, you can't. He said, he didn't say, I don't want you to be my disciple. He says, you can't be. Why did he say you can't be? Because he's going to sometimes demand us to give up some things that we want. And he don't want to be sitting up there arguing with his students talking about, um, listen, we're about to go to the gate and I need you to hurry up and get to the gate because we got to go. Oh, but Lord, I got this. Yeah, I remember the, uh, my cologne. But Lord, I got this cologne and um, I don't know if I'm willing to give up this cologne. He's like, come on, we got to go. We got to go. We have a mission to accomplish. But Lord, I know, but I don't I, I got so many things I want to do. A disciple loses their identity for the teacher's mission. I pray this is blessing you guys. But a Christian have their own agenda. A Christian pretty much is saying, hey, listen, um, I carry the name, but I'm not doing nothing. He say, I'm going to carry the name, but I'm not going to I'm going to alter some of the things he tell me to do. I know he tells me to pray for my enemy. But since I am a Christian and since I know he loves me, I ain't praying for none of my enemies. I'm going to curse him and he's still going to take me to heaven because I'm a Christian. That's what Christians think. Disciples say, I am going to pray for my enemy because the master oh, commands us to do it. <laughs> I'm going to abstain from certain desires because the master commands us to do it. It's in his mission. It's in his teachings. Christians don't care about what the master is teaching because Christians carry the name, but they don't carry the life. I pray that you understand what I'm saying. Now watch this. Every Jesus disciple is a Christian, like in Acts chapter 11. So if you are a Jesus disciple, you're automatically a Christian. But every Christian is not automatically a disciple. And that is the message in this series. And that is scary because there's a lot of people who think they're disciples. And listen, the way you go know that you are a disciple, look at your obedience to the master. That's going to tell you everything. Don't don't say don't even mention how faithful you are to church. 
Don't even mention if you're singing in the choir. Don't even mention if you pick up the paper around the church. Don't even mention if you shovel the snow in front of the church. Don't even mention if you give at the church. Every, that is good. And we're going to talk about all those things. But I can tell you right now, the thing that's going to make you a disciple is following the master's teaching and obeying it. That is the thing. And so what he does is he gives us his, uh, us his spirit to help us do it. We cannot do what the, what the teacher is commanding us to do. If we read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he begins to share his, his and for the sake of this, I'll say, I'll, I'll use this so you can understand. For the sake of this, he began to share his philosophy. He began to say things like, blessed are the peacemakers, uh, for they shall be called the children of God. He said, blessed are those when men hate you and revile against you for my name's sake. He would say, blessed, blessed are the, those who, uh, um, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. He starts saying all this stuff. And the scripture says the people were sitting there saying, what kind of, where did this man get these teachings? Well, he was doing what he was introducing a new philosophy, a new doctrine. And this is what rabbis did. So this is why the importance of him being 30 was key. So don't take that 30 lightly. You could not have disciples until you were 30. So this is why Jesus waited till 30 before he began his public ministry. And then when he began, he went full off. He went full charge and began to start getting his disciples. And he looked now. Now, I know many of you will say, and, and if you're like me, you probably had to ask this question. Cause I used to, I did. I used to ask this question all the time. Like, like Jesus, I don't understand. Wouldn't you, wouldn't it be easier to get people who already knew the scriptures? Wouldn't y'all, wouldn't y'all ask the same question? The virtual church. Like, why would you, you're building a spiritual, you're building something spiritual. Go get spiritual disciples, right? People who got foundation. He went and he bypassed all the people that was going to the temple, doing all the rituals. He did not go to none of them. Isn't that something? <laughs> Somebody, now I want you to think about this. Why did he bypass those people who already had the, the, who had the outward appearance of holiness, who had the, who had all of the, 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 the robes and everything. They, they had the dignity of the day. Why did he bypass them? And, and he was going, went on the sea and grabbed fishermen, people who, who was, uh, sitting up here and, and, and sweating all night working, had no knowledge of nothing. Why would he go get them? Hmm. I wonder. Is it is it possible that our traditions can keep us locked in from the new rabbi's <laughs> doctrine? <laughs> because, you know, when he came in, he started saying stuff that even the religious people was like this. They, the religious people could not conceive. They could not be one of his disciples because they could not learn from him. Because when he began to speak, it was contrary to what they thought. And that's why one of the number one enemies to disciples is religious people. <laughs> so this is why Jesus is looking for disciples. He's not looking for religious people. You know, it's, if, if right now, if you grew up with a bunch of religion in you and you knew rules and regulations, but you never knew God, when Jesus calls you to be his disciple, you go struggle. You want to know why? Because you go think Jesus want the way you dress. You go think that Jesus want, you know, how, how, how holy you look. Jesus like, give me your heart and all that other stuff will work out because disciples, he looks at hearts. He's working on heart. He's trying to put his laws in your heart. That's why he's like, listen, I'm going to I'm going to bypass these holy looking folk and I'm going to get some ordinary people. He snatched me out of a uh, out of a night party. He snatched people out of street corners with drugs. He listen. God is like this. I'm tired of all these people who grew up in church. They knew that they got the airport culture, but they don't got me. <laughs> So I am going to call disciples. I'm going to call people who nobody least suspect, and I'm going to put my ways in them. So all he's asking us is if we're going to be his disciple to follow him. All right. So let's go back to Luke. As, and, and, cause I really want to bring this as an introduction. Every week, we are going to make sure, because this is the year that we're going to be disciples. We are committing to being disciples. We're not just going to be people who just, oh, I go to church. I'm a Christian. No, we're about to be disciples and disciples make a decision to follow the teacher, the master teacher. So let's go back to Luke again. I want to bring your attention, uh, back to that passage of Luke, uh, 14, where it says, um, let's go to verse, uh, We'll go to verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them. Now, let's look at verse 26. 
if any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yea, his own life cannot be my disciple. Or again, whoever is not willing to go through security checkpoint for me cannot be my disciple. So hate here means value. It means whoever, whoever does not put me in my agenda before father, mother, wife, sister, brother, you can't be my disciple because I am going to be requiring things from you that guess what? You're not going to be willing to give up. All right. So look at this. Look at verse 27. Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So you see how he says, you may say Jesus coming to my heart, but he says, okay, now I, now I, I accept it because I've given eternal life to all, but watch this, but now it's time for to be a disciple and disciples have to bear their cross. Look at verse 27. Again, you got to bear your cross and come after him. So you got a cross. I got a cross. My wife has a cross. Everybody watching this, you have a cross. There is something at security checkpoint that that's saying beep, beep, beep. You can't go further until you give this up. <laughs> Every last one of us. I don't know if any of y'all on here is good. Some of us got four. I'm just kidding. I, I, you should have four crosses. Lord help us. But <laughs> you, you, you may have a big cross. And guess what? Your cross is your cross is so custom made, tailor made just for you. Isn't that something? Because we all got different paths. You know, somebody be like, my cross could be, you know, for the sister, one. Uh, it could be a sister here saying your cross is going to be uh, giving up, uh, you know, men, and uh, a man may be on here saying your cross may be giving up women, and then somebody here saying, well, my my that ain't my cross. My cross ain't men and women. Your cross could be pride. Your cross can be, uh, you think you all that. Your cross can be, um, you know, excuse making. Your, you, we all got something that we gonna have to deny. So I, this should bring all of us encouragement because there is nobody here who's left. Everybody here has to give up something. So everybody got to go to security checkpoint and give up and get their bags checked before they go to the other side. All of us. So this is where we should bring encouragement and hope to each other is that, Hey, since we all got to go through here, man, we have a community now that can encourage each other. Hey, listen, just let's just bear up our cross, follow our master and let's go to the other side. Now look what he says here. He says, verse 28, for which of you intend to build a tower, sitteth not down first and count it the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. What Jesus is saying here is like, which one are you about to build something and don't first sit down and say, hey, can I pay for this? Can I truly afford this? He says, nobody do that. So he says, if you're going to be my disciple, you got to do the same thing. You got to sit back and say, am I wanting to give it all up for him? Do I do I want to really, really, really be his disciple and give up some things? He said, that's a that's a decision you have to make. That's why I said every Christian is not a disciple because every Christian ain't willing to sit down and count up the cost and say, I'm willing to give up some things. And again, it's not going to feel good all the time. Those who live godly will suffer persecution. This is not going to be always a cakewalk. But I can promise you this, that if you're going through something, don't feel like you're by yourself. Every Jesus disciples is going to have some struggles, some challenges. And those challenges is bringing us closer to him. God has us in his hands. But sometimes um, there's going to be things that you just been you had you were very comfortable with. We were very comfortable with. And God is like, I need you to give that up. And that is where the struggle is, because you're in this flesh and this flesh don't want to give up nothing. <laughs> All right. Let me close here. Now, look at verse. Uh, look at verse 29. Less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that began to mock him. And all, all and begin to finish it or behold and begin to mock him. Look at verse 30 saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Let me close with this. This is why I tell you right now that I'm, I'm just a firm believer and some people may disagree, but I'm a firm believer that yes, get your ticket. We got to confess and believe that Jesus Christ is our, our savior. But listen, you cannot just stay at the ticket gate and just um, at the ticket counter and say, yes, I confess and got my ticket and never go through security checkpoint. You're going to have to pay a price and watch this. You're going to have to finish. Okay. That's why he used this analogy. He says, listen, you, he gave an analogy of a person who started, who began, meaning they got the ticket. They was happy. They went to church. Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But because they did not count the cause by the time it 
at the end, they did not finish it. And people were looking at them and mocking them, saying, this man started off saved. Now he ain't even serving God no more. I don't know about you. I don't want that. I don't want to be sitting up here preaching to y'all. I don't want to be up here teaching to y'all. I don't want to be up here acting like I'm a Christian and then get to the end and hear him say, I don't know who you are. I don't know about y'all, but that thing is important to me, which means he's using this analogy that everybody who start ain't finished. That is scary. <laughs> and that's why I'm trying to get you to see that. Just don't get this. Oh, I'm saved and I got this ticket. I'm good. I can just go do whatever I want to do. No, you have to finish. You have to finish finish. And that is what disciples are making. So when Jesus was telling his disciples this, he was pretty much saying, listen, if you go follow me. There's a cost. There is a cost to this thing. He says, but it's going to be so worth it because you got eternal life. You're going to stay with me in eternity. He said, and I'm going to take care of you here and I'm going to protect you here, but you will go through. You will be hated for my name's sake because you are associated in my school of discipleship. <laughs> so now, so and remember guys, when you are a disciple, you bear the name of the teacher. So perfect example, I'll, I'll say this, you know, for many of you know, I, I teach music. I've been, I've been teaching music for since 1998. And guess what? I, many, there have been many people who have came to me and said, oh, that's, they go, they go Nathan Salter's student. They go Nathan Salter's student. He, he's one of Nathan Salter's students. They, they refer the student to the teacher. <laughs> I pray you guys get it. So those students were my disciples. Every music student that come to my school, they become a disciple, meaning they begin to play like me. They begin to understand music like me. I teach them. And guess what? They then take what what they were learned and then they share that in their in wherever they play. So it's the same thing. So I understand this concept because I've been building disciples musically for years. And it's funny because people associate my students with the teachers. And they associate the students with me. So I, somebody texts me not too long ago. Hey, can your student play for this? Can your student play? for this can your student play for it and I'm like wow it's amazing these students have phone numbers themselves but they come to me because I'm the rabbi of the schools so I of, of the students so I pray this makes sense but the thing is when they start to play when they start to do their thing there is some of me that you go see through them the way they play the way they understand music has everything to do with how I taught them I pray this makes sense because that's what Jesus is trying to do for you Jesus is trying to get his laws his ways inside you so you don't just say i'm a christian but you can be a disciple i pray that this word spoke to your spirit i'm gonna ask you to bow your heads at this time father in the name of jesus lord i come to you right now and i am asking you holy spirit that you would just help us to be disciples. We don't want to be just Christian by name. We don't want to just be individuals that just carry the name. But God, we want to really serve you with our whole heart. Father, I ask you right now, God, that you would bless each person who's watching this right now to make a full commitment to follow you. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our Master. And so, God, I pray, God, that we would take on the desire to want to study your word, your laws, and your ways, and be obedient to your commands. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Now, listen, if you are watching this and if you don't have a relationship with um, Jesus Christ, I am here to encourage you that we are living in the last days. You do not have that much time left. He loves you so much. He died on the cross for your sins. You don't have to be eternally lost. And if you just give your life to Jesus Christ today, guess what? You will have eternal life because he loves you so much. So listen, if this is you, I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and rose on the third day for my sins. Thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for keeping me. I confess my sins before you. I repent of my sins. And today I ask you to come into my heart and be my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Make me one of your disciples. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if that is you, the angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are rejoicing here at Fuel Station Church. The people at Virtual Church is rejoicing. Listen, we love you so much. We pray that heaven will smile upon you and be with us in this series, uh, just disciples or Christians. I'm telling you, it is going to, we're going to go into so many good things. But listen, on this journey, if you want to get connected to a church, please hit me and my wife up or anyone here at Fuel Station Church and we will uh, help you get connected and plugged in. We love you. And we praise God for you in Jesus' wonderful name. And we'll see you next week. God bless you. Let's give God a hand. Praise everybody.